Hello, welcome back to Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. Oh, I gotta do this. I can't do it, but I gotta do Oh my, Mr. Lawyer feels that way about me. Apparently, he isn't aware of your real secret at all. This is no time to be embarrassed. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just hardly accustomed to that sort of thing. Hurry on. In any case, whatever it was that he saw on the night of the incident, my, my words, I would drag it out of him. Does that mean Mr. Maurice is the witness today? No. I believe that he will be the first to take the stand. Sister Kihimi, she claims to have seen the very instant in which you carried out the crime. I just want to ask you one last time. It really wasn't you who killed Mr. Weiss, did him, correct? That is correct. It wasn't me. Very well, then. Oh, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes. You are a prosecutor, are you? Are you sure about this? Your true identity is revealed. Don't worry. I made the necessary arrangements. I see. It is a prosecutor's job to doubt people. But right now, I'm a defense attorney. The defense attorney's job is to believe in people, and to believe until the bitter end. That's what my friend told me once. Mr. Edgeworth. I simply ask that you watch and decide for yourself whether or not I am fit to do the task I have been entrusted with. Very well, sir. I need my defense in your capable hands. Let's go, Edgeworth! Well. Court is now in session for this trial of Sister Iris of Hazard I'm playing as Edgeworth! The event says we're in your honor. Oh yeah! The event says indeed you appear to be ready. However, the same cannot be said for the prosecution in this case. Indeed. I'm not sure I like such a blatant waste of this court's time. An empty prosecutor's chair can only be reality that the prosecutor has no confidence in their ability to prove their case. It would seem this case is already over before I had a chance to begin. I'm ready to announce my verdict at this time. This court finds the defendant. of the prosecutor's office. There, there isn't, but I'm sure once we are in the courtroom. Ah, I told you, there's no such weakling. What is that? I'm not sure I care for such a thing in my courtroom. But bailiff, remove that whip. Hold it! I have no objection to the whip. You don't. The prosecution can wield a whip or drink 17 cups of coffee. But there is still only one truth. That is what I stand here to prove today. This promise is to be interesting, Miles Edgeworth. I had expected to face Phoenix right here today, but looking at you now, maybe this is what I have been waiting for all this time. Miles Edgeworth, I will not allow this chance to crush you slip through my fingers. I see you brought your flair for the astronic. Astronic. Allow me to add two things, two things I'm not sure about. People acting bizarrely in my court. Wow, oh, the stage is set. Now continue with the proceedings, Your Honor. Very well. Swan Karma, please give an outline of this case. With as little whipping as possible. The murder victim is the famed picture book author, Miss Elise Timber. Her body was found in the Hazakura Temple Court. She had been stabbed through the torso by a ceremonial sword from a golden statue. The sword in this picture is the weapon in question. Well, the court accepts this photo of 
crime scene. There's no mistake. This was the doing of Sister Iris. After all, there is a witness to her crime. Very well. Please bring this witness to the sand. And so it begins. My first and last trial as a defense attorney. Care for this at all. Witness, please stand up nice and straight. If I recall correctly, there are a few milk crates in the defendant's body for our back pain. Wait, witness. Bailiff, fetch a crate for this poor lady, please. Once again, your name and occupation, please. the Garden of Holy Judgment. Those with luxury in their hearts should leave this sanctuary at once. You want me to leave? No need to get your bikinis in a twist. Let me tell you, I'm a sight to be born in summer. <laughs> in any case, witness, I hear that you saw the crime take place on the night in question. That's right. I can still hardly believe it myself, to be honest. There's no way dear little Iris could do anything let us hear what you have to say then. First, tell us about your own movements that night. <laughs> Are you Canadian? <laughs> the night of the work. That night I was helping an acolyte with the retreating in the Aider Temple. But, well, as you can see, my back went stacked up and flat. So I left Iris to help the acolyte and returned to Hazakura Temple. There's no back at the Aider Temple, you see. And I needed a long hot soap. It was after I had finished, just as I was heading out. That's when I saw it. Hmm. So it was simply coincidence that you found yourself returning to Hazard Temple? Yes, you could say that. If my back hadn't been in so much pain, I would have stayed at the Inner Temple. That sounds like a pretty important statement she just made. There's only one problem with this testimony that I can see. And you're not about to fall at the first hurdle. Now are you? Mr. Edgeworth, please begin your cross examination. You can do this, Miles! Twice. I just knew that unless I warmed it up, it was going to finally finish me off. Hold it! So you returned to the house of her temple in order to take a bath. 
My death is to blame for everything. It's a do or be done in kind of world after all. How long were you in the bath for? If you don't mind me asking. My, my, my. What a filthy little rogue you are. I know what's on your mind. I bet your next question is going to be, where exactly did you wash? Uh, this is why you have to watch the young ones. What are you going on about? I was... Uh, pathetic, Miles Edgeworth. The lowest of the low. Is there some sort of kid these eyes sucked in the princess of the <laughs> Anyway, I couldn't afford to relate my poster to the you understand, so...
That is all I can do for my day. I don't know. I don't know. Iris is test strong. So she rain lights out though. When the murder. Wait, so this this says that she was in the inner temple. So that means Iris would have had to be in the inner temple, not in the Objection! <laughs> Witnesses have to undergo their own trials, I'm afraid. The defendant's fate rests on their powers of observation and memory, after all. Well, well, well. Don't worry. I'm worthy enough to the test. I'm a woman of faith, after all. The head honcho of Hasakura Temple. In that case, Miss Honcho, I'd like you to explain something for me. The discrepancy between your testimony and that of the defendant, Iris. She claims that after ringing the lights out bell, she went back and stayed in her room. Which means she did not go to the inner temple at all. No! She said that. The defendant or witness. Who is more likely to lie if you suppose? The defendant is simply lying to cover her back. Objection! But that is completely illogical. The murder was committed in the courtyard of Cousin Her Temple. Claiming that she went to the inner temple would make her a much better ally. But that is all. Whatever the reason, I can't believe that she would lie. She doesn't even have honest eyes. Ugh. All people lie. That is my belief. Why am I the only one being whipped in here? Anyway, neither the witness nor the defendant have any reason to lie. Which means, you must call your memory into question. Dear, dear, dear. My memory is perfect, crystal clear, especially in winter. Then, I suppose it's too early to end this cross-examination. Mr. Edgeworth, if you are going to question the memory of this witness, you will need to show me a more decisive piece of evidence. Understood, Your Honor. I was naive to think that alone would do the trick. And please add your comments about the writers to the test. Let us return to the cross-examination. That night, I was helping half the other training on every time. Iris came to the other time. She was dressed exactly as she had been at dinner. Oh. Hold it! Oh. Are you sure that you're not making a mistake? You, young man, need to get your estimation of, of, of me up from before. <laughs> Iris always wears the same clothes. The smallest thing out of place. Would have stood out like a sore thumb to me. I'm making a mistake, thinking I made a mistake. An excellent finish there, witness. Still, I have to wonder. testimony again because she was in her room until the murder was discovered. <laughs> Thing straight. The defendant whom you claim to have met. She was wearing this demon warning hood, correct? Of 
course. That is a very important piece of clothing, I'll have you know. <laughs> Wait a minute. Objection! Hold it right there. Why do you have that? That's the question of the day now, isn't it, Miss Von Karma? I'll have you know that this hood was given to someone as a gift that night. Before the lights out bell was rung. What? You know where I'm going with this, don't you? If the witness had seen the defendant as she claimed. Then the iris she saw should have been missing this very hood. Well, what is it? No, 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 the stock surplus of hoods, eh? Each nun is only given one hood. This should be the only hood that I herself is. Mm. And this is quite strange. Ugh! Ah, if there was a surplus of hoods, then she could have worn one of those. There's no contradiction here. Hmm. Sorry to break this to you, Miss Wonkarma, but you won't get away that easily. Discrepancies such as this will sow seeds in any human heart. The seeds of doubt. Witness, while I don't wish to call your testimony into doubt, you must give every detail with precision. I'm not sure I'm comfortable going along with this. Sister, you shall continue with your testimony. Tell us what you saw after finishing your bath on your way back to the inner temple. The seeds of doubt are sprouting in the judge's heart. They just need a little more stimulation to bear fruit. Contradictory stimulation. <laughs> After my bath, I finished my bath around 11, and I thought I should return to the inner temple. And as I was walking back, I heard a noise from the court. I took a look. There it was. Oh, Mr. Goose. And with that sword of all things. Mr. Goose was staying in the corner room, which faces out onto the court. The stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of her room. You saw a truly terrible sight, didn't you? If I was in your place, there would be much like Miss Von Karma whipping Mr. Edgeworth in two in court. And me, seeing it all from this very chair. <laughs> oh, something like that. <laughs> this judge, his imagination is about as vivid and creative as Detective Gumshoe. I would look the fool if I commented on such foolishness. Anyway, this case is mine, Miles Edgeworth. Calling everyone by their full name, can't you do something about that habit of yours? Oh, you 
dug your own grave, Miles Edgeworth. What do you say, Mr. Edgeworth? Is this testimony important? It is important. This may initially appear to hope at the end of this event, but I can't see any other leads at the moment. Your Honor, I would like these new statements to be added to the testimony. Miles Edgeworth, if you want to hang yourself, you need only to ask. I'll gladly leave you my work. Witness, add that statement to your testimony. No problem. Now that you mentioned it, Iris didn't have her hood on. to explain yourself. Anyway, she looked different from mom, so that really stuck out. Like me holding a whipped puppy instead of my whip. At least then it might bite you and not someone else. There's should never put on. I'm sure it did. Very well. Now, please tell us what you think. Say anyway. Oh, please do. My brain is something else, especially in winter. However, I think you are overlooking one thing. Miss Von Karma, would you be so kind as to take another look at the autopsy report? Is it the autopsy report? The victim did fall from a height of ten feet. However, this fall was after she was killed. Ah, that's right. It says after death right here. Seeing the witness claims to have seen is contradictory. If the defendant stabbed and killed the victim there in the courtyard, how did the victim then go on to take a ten foot fall? Oh, order! Order! The victim was killed and then fell. If that is the case. Then the victim must have been killed. Don't you agree? That is the logical conclusion. Yes, that's right. The victim must have been stabbed by the defendant in her own room. She was then thrown out of her window down into the courtyard of the 
offered her any signs of a struggle in Miss Dimmer's room. She was stabbed with a sword. That would leave her blood stain. Wouldn't you agree? Well, well, Miss Von Karma, was there any blood? <sighs> no traces of blood were found in the victim's room. The therapist just caused traces of blood to be found on my chorus, put off fear. However, if there was no blood in the room, well, I'm sure there's no need for me to go over this, as I'm sure your honor is well aware. But when a staff one produces the most blood, when it produces the most blood, very little blood is actually lost at the moment of a blazing search. If you want to talk about when the most blood will be lost from the body, that would be the one before this removed. Indeed, with the weapon still in place, it acts like a wood on the wind. That's true, with the weapon still in the body, it wouldn't be much to perfectly reasonable line of thinking. We have come to a conclusion then. The victim was thrown out of the window with the sword still in place. This removes all of the contradictions. Order! 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 I must admit that this is a probable version of events. I expect no less from Francisco von Karma. She locates and takes control of every vital point. It seems that we need a clear testimony from the witness. Remove all supposition on your part and tell us only the facts, please. Witness! Remain standing on the crate. Don't go selling me short now. The weight of winter snow has bent me out of shape. Especially my back and my mood. <laughs> Sister, please give us your testimony. I will give you a vigorous message once we are finished here. Rip the whip. Oh, boy. Alright, alright. I have no chance on this. I'm just gonna... Further details... Well, it's across the scene. The sword was already in place. Thinking about it now, I didn't actually see the stat, Mr. Gullis. I've never seen so much blood before. That's when I think to change blame me. Well, I awoke Mr. Gullis. Stabbing Mr. Gullis through the back. Miss Von Karma's theory. Von Karma strive for nothing but perfection. Putting together such facts is nothing for me. You should know that, Miles Edgeworth. Perfection is an impossibility, Francisco Von Karma, and I'm here to teach you just that. Witness, you will add the statement to your testimony. Oh, was that important? 
more important than you can imagine. I saw the instant in which the blade plunged into the hilt was smoothly drawn out. <laughs> Hold it! By Mr. Gun, you are referring to the golden statue. Stabbing someone with the suit of Sito, a sacred treasure, is terrible enough, but to then make Mr. Gamey hold the blade. Truly, really, a heinous, despicable crime. It's easy to despise something, anyone can do it. However, there is something that cannot be done so easily. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's doubly hard for you. Anyway, what's the problem? Exactly why would the killer set up this gruesome scene? Can anyone explain the reason behind that? There isn't always a logical reason behind why someone acts. That's true. So true. In early spring, for example, I often find myself. There isn't always. A phrase might come in handy sometimes. There are too many unnatural elements in this case. Why was it necessary for Mr. Suchi's evening that he was as a weapon? Why was the weapon ultimately placed back in the hand of the statue? If I can expose the flaws in this test, perhaps that would be good. I don't think I would have been able to get the ones before this, but this is the sword. I, I kind of know this one. Sister of Bikini, you are a reliable witness. At least, I'd like to think so. But there are too many contradictions here. Oh, what do you mean? You make it sound as though I'm a liar. But if you're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. What contradictions are you talking about? In the scene that the witness claims to have seen. The weapon was thrust up to its hilt into the victim. Furthermore, the killer withdrew the weapon smoothly from the body. However, both of these are complete impossibilities. <laughs> what do you mean? Please, explain to me. Fuck! Explain yourself! To start with, do you think it would be possible to stab someone to the hilt like this? No matter how I look at the defender, she doesn't appear strong Objection! Doesn't appear. What meaning is true? I, too, may appear to be weak and firm. But I can crush men under my heel and make them weep. So should I so tears. The objection stands. I left a little back there, I must admit. Objection! That isn't the only issue here. If this sword was truly stabbed into the body of the victim. Well, just like it on the branches, it certainly wouldn't come out soon. That's... We also have the problem of the amount of bleeding. It's true that when a blade is left in a barn, it acts as a plug in However, when the weapon is shaped like this, it's an entirely different story. The wound would be too large for the blade to completely stop the bleeding. OBJECTION! That's nothing more than conjecture. In reality, the victim was stabbed with a CTC gun. Even a weapon of this nature may still sometimes slide out smoothly, and may still sometimes stop the blood loss. OBJECTION! Finished. There is still one more conclusive contradiction. You've still got more. This one is simple. If this sword really was thrust in all the way to the hill, why is there only blood on the tip of it? Ah. Oh, if this witness is telling the truth, then there should be blood along the entire length of the sword. Oh, okay, yeah. Order, order. Bravo, my sister. Raising this many contradictions for a single piece of evidence. All the other attorneys I know could maybe manage one with that. But what does this all mean? You have proven contradictions regarding the murder weapon. Had you come this far, there can only be one answer. And that is... The weapon used to kill the victim. It's not the Shichishita. What? The foolish, the foolish idea born from the foolish mind of a foolhardy, foolish fool. Let's examine this again. What it was it that made us think the sword was the murder weapon? Well, it's because Mr. Gamey was holding it. Exactly. However, if you reflect on this, that is the only case that you see The impression left by the scene was just too strong. That is what influenced us. It influenced us to believe that the Shichi Shito was the murder weapon. 
order. 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 Ugh. So maybe the CTC tail was not the murder weapon. Even if that is the case, it changes nothing to Miles and Miles. The sister here saw everything. She saw the defendant stab the victim with a sword like object. That's true. The response, Mr. Edgeworth. If that is so, I would like the prosecution to answer the obvious question it raises. The obvious question? Yes, namely. Where did the real murder weapon disappear to? It goes without saying that the police search for the ball in the surrounding area. Perhaps the prosecution can enlighten us as to a sort of like option to stop. But that's Answer the question, Ms. Von Carmel. No evidence of that kind was found. Another mystery to throw onto the pile. A trial without a murder weapon is a tricky beast. Excuse me. Could I say something? I just remembered something. What is it, sister? I was just thinking, it's possible that just maybe what actually happened was it was just over there. What exactly are you going on here? The murder weapon, I mean, maybe. I think I might know where the sword was disposed of. What? Well then, I think we need to hear testimony from you one more time, sister. Impossible! What else? What else could this old woman have seen? <laughs> Location of the weapon. I saw the murderer driving around 11 p.m. And after asking that it be recorded, I went out to the edge. And there, I saw tracks. Tracks that indicated the snowmobile had been used. It takes 15 minutes to walk to Dusky Ridge, but less than 5 to one of those. Maybe they threw the weapon into the window and came back while it was not. I just could have done that. <laughs> Witness, please, tell us everything you know right away next time. Well, I'm not in the best of shape, but with my back and my age, you know. Quite. There were indeed snowmobile tracks in front of the main gate. Here's a photograph. Interesting fear. The tracks begin in front of Hazakura Temple and run all the way to Dusky Bridge. That solves your pesky little problem, yes. The order is current, it's quite swift, meaning that it doesn't freeze over in winter. <coughs> Making it the perfect place to dispose of the murder weapon. Did you really go to the river to dispose of the murder weapon? Mr. Edgeworth, your cross examination, please. Anyway, whatever the reason, the fact remains that the defendant could have done this. 
murder weapon was disposed of in the river. Another point to make. Another mystery to keep quiet. Is there any reason to go with me? Luckily, there surely are problems. Now all I have to do is start looking for this in this flock account. just about to show this one, but I had to check to see if it was right just in case. <laughs> I admit this photograph proves something. It proves that the snowmobile was used on the night of the murder. He finally accepted the inevitable, it seems, Miles Edgeworth. However, if what the witness says is true, then why is there only one set of tracks? Iris left hazard for the threw the weapon into the river. If this was the case, then naturally there should be two sets of tracks in the snow. Those from heading out to the bridge, and those from coming back. Hmm. Oh, you're right. You were forgetting one thing, Miles Edgeworth. On the night of the murder, it was snowing. The tracks leading to the bridge were erased by the snow. This removes your precious contradiction, now that's the case. I see, while she was at the river, the snow stopped. We just the return tracks in this What do you have to say now, Miles Edgeworth? Is there a full other theory? This idea that the snowfall covered one set of tracks. There's a contradiction. The tracks through the river were covered by snow. What a nice However, Miss Von Karma, that is impossible. Do you care to explain why there is a root index finger currently pointed in my general direction? No need. The evidence will do all of the talking for me. On the night of the murder, the killer went to and returned from Dusky Bridge. In order to dispose of the murder weapon, the outgoing tracks were erased by snow. Or so claims Miss Von Karma. Mr. Edgeworth, present your evidence to the contrary. Evidence that the outgoing tracks were not covered by snow. Tell us again what time it was when you witnessed the crime. Like I said, it was around 11. Of course, this means that the weapon was thrown away after that time, correct? On that note, please take a look at this data. It is the weather report for Eagle Mountain on the night of the murder. The uh, weather report? Snow started to fall at 7 p.m., but stopped at around 10.50. 
Therefore, when the sister witnessed the crime at 11 p.m., the snow had already stopped falling. It is impossible for any tracks made after that time to have been covered up. <sighs> order, order. Very well then. It looks like this one car was quite as well. Snowed in. Oh, <laughs> it's too soon to be closing this trial due to snow. Well, it's actually how pathetic it is to rely on the weather of all things. Answer me this then. What is a weather report ever correct? Uh, no, no, you've got it all wrong. Uh, all that, I'll say it again. This isn't a forecast, this is actual data. Ugh. Forecast, data, all weather reports have some inaccuracies. There may have still been snowing in the vicinity well past 11 p.m. It's true, you cannot be totally sure. Eh? What? How did she pull that off? It stopped snowing at Hazard Curry Temple when the murder took place. You need to provide conclusive evidence of this. You've come this far. There's no turning back now. Very well. I can see that not allow any doubt to remain concerning this testimony. Ha! Huh. You can't back down, can you? Such a perfectionist smiles at your Very well then, Mr. Edgeworth. Where is your evidence that it had already stopped snowing when the victim was killed? I didn't see anything here, Dusty Witch. 
you must have just failed to see it, sister. Maybe, but when I made it back to Hazard for a turn, it was there by the main gate. The snowmobile, I mean. I know what I saw. It was covered in snow, too. But that isn't possible. <laughs> Order. Order. Order in the court. What does this all mean? <sighs> so then what was the snowmobile used for? It wasn't taken by the defendant when she went to the inner temple. The fit had been, and the witness couldn't possibly have seen it by the gate. Furthermore, it wasn't used by the killer to dispose of the murder. If that was the case, there should be two sets of tracks in this photo. Stop snowing. Someone used the snowmobile to return to Hazakura Temple. Mm -hmm. I never thought a simple snowmobile could cause so much trouble. Thank you for all we can from this witness. Yes, yes. I have nothing more to add. I told you everything. Everything that I know. But then, that still leaves us with the same problem. If only there was someone, a witness who could testify to having seen the snowmobile. A witness. Was there no one out walking perhaps near Dusky Bridge on that night? I don't think that's likely. It was cold enough to freeze your ears off. Only an idiot would go out wandering in that. Unless they had something really important to do. Mm -hmm. That's a shame. Hold on. Something is coming to me. An idiot may well have gone wandering out on the subarctic that night. Your Honor, actually, you're just one of the leaders who could be of help to us. Really? Do you know of someone who might have seen the snowmobile on the night of the murder? I don't know for sure if he saw it or not, but there are two things about him that do come to mind. Which are, first, that he saw something incredible on the night of the murder. And the second, this individual that I am thinking of from wandering outside on that cold night. In other words, he is our kind of idiot. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this idiot you're talking to? Oh, where? Take that! This guy must be Father Joe, too, who is the letter's guide to obnoxious French painting. This is Larry Butts, and so he was a victim. This guy. You're stupid. Interesting. Why was he not there? He got signed on the night of the murder. That, that's. I could tell them all about his designs for hikers, but it may cost us his credibility as a witness before you can call him. He is, after all, an artist. He was, perhaps, searching for something in the snowy scene. Although I cannot guarantee that this is the reason. So, this unfortunate, unreliable looking man, what exactly was it that he saw? I intend to extract that from him right here in this courtroom. Summon this youth as a witness immediately. I have no choice, do I? I believe he's in the gallery for this trial. It would not take long to summon him. Very well. Where are you? You may have escaped me yesterday, but today I'm going to get everything out of you. The court will now adjourn for a 20 minute break. Ms. Von Karma, please see you preparing the next witness. Understood, Your Honor. Good. Well then, court is now in recess. <laughs> this is really cool. I'm really interested in this one. Bye.